Hello, my name is Tom Morgan. I write about Skype for business development on my blog, thoughtstuff.co.uk. I've put together a short four-part series designed for developers who are just getting started with Skype for business development or are curious about what's possible. There are four videos in the series. In the first one, I covered the history of Skype for business, showed some screenshots and listed the different types of development tools. In this video, we're going to dig into one of those tools, the Client SDK. Now, in order to do that, I've created a and thought up a small scenario um, to use as a worked example. Now, if you've used Skype for Business, you'll know that when an incoming call comes in, if you're listening to music, uh, Skype for Business will actually uh, reduce the volume of that music whilst you take the call. That's really useful if you listen to music on external speakers and you have a headset. Um, because the music then doesn't get in the way. The problem I have is that I, I wear um, a set of headphones, an integrated headset, uh, when I work in a busy office, which I also use to listen to music. And so what happens when an incoming call comes in is that that volume gets reduced, but it doesn't disappear altogether. So I still hear it whilst I'm having the conversation. And the overall effect is that uh, it's like being in a movie with a kind of background music thing going on. So what I want to do is have it so that uh, when I'm on a call, uh, it pauses my music for me. And then when I come off the call, uh, again, it takes it off pause and continues playing. So let's look at how we can do that using the, uh, the client SDK. So I've got uh, Visual Studio here. Um, really simple project going on here. Um, it's a WPF application. It's got a single um, XAML file and all this code is not really production ready. It's just got enough in it just to kind of show you what's possible. So uh, I'm using the client SDK. What does that mean? Um, it means that I've got a reference here um, to some of these DLLs that you get when you download the, uh, the client SDK. And really it's this uh, Microsoft.link.model one that's quite interesting. Um, and that gives you this here, the link client.get client. So what I'm doing here <clears throat> on this line here is really just getting a handle to the link client. Now the link client needs to be running. Um, you don't need to be signed in, but it does need to be on the system and running in order for this to work properly. Uh, so you might not be signed in. So the first thing we're going to do is register a state changed event. Now, uh, this is something you do quite a lot in uh, Skype for Business um, development is register for events because everything's asynchronous. Uh, at the end of the day, you're talking to a backend server, so um, things can happen in, in funny sequences and in sequences you might not expect. So I'm going to do that first, and then I'm going to try and subscribe to the presence if signed in, but I'm also going to do that, you can see this here, on this state changed. So um, all I'm doing here is I'm checking really to see if I'm signed in, and if I'm not signed in, I'm not going to do anything, I'm just going to wait until I am signed in. So I do two things here. The first is this client.self.contact.uri. Now, I don't want to go mega deep into detail here, but client.self, as you might imagine, is the person you're signed in as. .contact is the contact object, and URI is their SIP address. Um, SIP being the identifier in Skype for Business uh, used to identify people. It looks like an email address, but with SIP at the front, um, and uniquely identifies people. And what I'm doing is I'm setting it to this property here, self SIP address. Now, the reason I'm doing that is if I go into the XAML for a minute, just so you can see, there is a control here. Now, this is one of those WPF controls I talked about in the introductory, introductory video. Um, and what it gives me is here, I just drop this in and I set the source uh, to be the, that property um, that I just showed you. And what it does is it puts the little presence icon, the little colored presence icon, along with my name on the screen. I'm just going to run this for a second just so you can see that. So you can see here, it's got my name and a green. But also, if I hover over this, I get all this stuff here. I get, you know, uh, who I am, uh, a nice photo of me. I can, if it wasn't me doing it to me, I could send myself an email, I could call, um, I could look myself up, uh, free busy information. You get all that stuff built in just by dropping in this single item here. So that shows you kind of how powerful this stuff can be. So coming back to the code for a second, the second thing I'm doing then is I'm saying, tell me when the contact information changes. Yep, so I'm, I'm, I'm adding another event handler here, the contact information change. 
And when that happens, so if you remember the brief, the original brief of the project, uh, it was that when I'm on a call, uh, it should pause. So how do I know if I'm on a call? Well, two things need to happen. First of all, my status, uh, my present status needs to change to busy. But then within that, there's a particular type of that where my activity um, changes to being on the phone. So that's what I'm that's what I'm doing here. I'm saying look at the look at the change in information. So E comes across in the event arguments. Um, have a look at the change in information. If it contains activity um, or it contains availability, which are the two things I want to check. So presence is availability. Then really the bit you're expecting to see is this if statement here. If the availability is busy and the activity is on the phone, then trigger the pause button. I'm not going to go into the trigger the pause button. It's horrible, C++, weirdy, weirdy code that I didn't really want to include. But all I really want to do is trigger the pause button that's on the keyboard. Okay, so let's see this in action. So um, I have Spotify here, uh, which I'm just going to start playing. Get that playing quietly. Okay, and minimize that out of the way, and then run my program as well, so it shows me it's here. So now I'm just going to trigger an incoming call, um, which is also going to be coming from me, but it'll be a different, it'll be a different SIP using the SIP pop-up. Uh, it's coming from a different person. Okay. And as soon as I answer that, my status goes busy. You can see here it says pause, so it's already triggered. Um, and down here, you can see it's gone. It's stopped playing. As soon as I hang up and go green again, it will start playing by itself. Yeah, so that's a really simple, um, really simple just kind of example application showing what's possible, what you can do, how easily it all ties together. Go back to this code here. None of this is particularly difficult. Um, you know, if you're a if you're a .NET developer or even a Java developer, it, it makes an awful lot of sense. The most complicated bits here of me messing around with the pause and not pause, just really saying whether or not there's pause on the screen. Um, obviously, you should be aware of the limitations of this. I mean, this isn't probably the best way of doing this. You can imagine it's going to trigger the pause button even if the even if the music's already paused, it's going to start playing it and stuff like that. But I kind of didn't want to make this really complicated all in terms of playing and pausing. I wanted to really concentrate on this kind of business side of things. Um, so hopefully that's been useful. Um, all the code is on GitHub, so you can take the code and look at it for yourself um, and try it out and build on it and do something differently. Um, that's fine. The address uh, is on the screen. There's also an accompanying blog post, um, which you can read. Uh, which goes alongside this and the code um, just to dig into a little bit more detail. Um, you can find out more information uh, on my blog, thoughtstuff.co.uk, or you can follow me on Twitter. I'm at Tom Organ, that's T O M O R G A N. Thanks for watching.